Good morning, I'm Terry and welcome to Tardis Spider. Today, John Nathan Turner makes changes. Today, Chris Chibnall is considered a villain. He has made many changes to Doctor Who. But from the time he stepped on board to the end of the original run of Doctor Who, John Nathan Turner also was considered a villain. So let's look back at some of the changes that John Nathan Turner made to Doctor Who in his first few seasons. Oh, and if you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, give us a subscribe, leave a comment, help us make this a better channel. And now, John Nathan Turner makes changes. With season 17 coming to an end, Graham Williams decides to leave. Production unit manager, John Nathan Turner was hired to be the next producer, although the BBC would consider JNT to be filling in until he had proved himself. Aiming for an older audience, Turner would make major changes as he reduced the level of humor and involved more science fiction into the storylines. With a new title sequence, the musical arrangement was redone with longtime composer Dudley Simpson let go. With marketing in mind, Turner wanted his doctor and companions to consistently wear the same costumes. Lala Ward would insist on retaining some control in Romana's costumes, but the doctor got a major overhaul. With a burgundy coat, trousers and hat, and the new 24-foot scarf, to top it off, Question marks are added to the collar of his shirt. Note, Tom Baker did not like the costume change and loathed the question marks. With the changes, marketing won. The script editor Christopher Bidmead on the question marks. He doesn't see himself as Doctor Who. He knows who he is. Next, cast changes would begin and in the opening story, K-9 would explode. This would be the cause of a petition drive to save the robot dog. He would return only to leave soon enough. The randomizer was also removed in this story. Behind the scenes, the star's personal life had drifted into work with Baker and Ward fighting. The show was over budget and ratings were sinking fast. Adding to all of this, Tom Baker did not like the changes, stating that the stories were too dark using too much techno babble and not enough moral arguments. He would often try to change the dialogue, shouting, This does not sound like anything. It's just audible print. Turner and Letts also did not see to eye on writers and directors. Turner looking at new hands and Letts wanting to stick with established ones. Letts believed Turner did not focus on scripts, being more interested in marketing. All things said, Baker decided to leave at season's end, and in the E-Space trilogy, the change in companions would begin. Adric would join, and Romana would leave. Returning from E-Space with Adric, the planet Trocken would introduce Nyssa and a new master. The master will be played by Anthony Ainley. Cast changes would keep coming, with air stewardess Tegan Jervanka joining and all of them being watched by a mysterious watcher. The doctor would fall to his end, and the season would end with a new doctor. Goodbye, Tom. Hello, Peter. So much more change to come. Even with poor viewership numbers, the BBC was satisfied with the new stories and atmosphere. Turner was now the official producer and granted the freedom for his vision of the next doctor. When J&T had worked as a unit production manager on All Creatures Great and Small, he met Peter Davison. And as producer of Doctor Who, he felt that Davison would bring a fresh, younger take on the Doctor. At the age of 29, Davison would be the youngest actor to play the show's lead. He was also the first actor to have watched the show as a child. Christopher Bidmead would wisely point out that the literal age of the actor wasn't important, since the doctor 
is centuries older than any actor in the part, and only that you believe he is our hero. Now, when it came to the shaping of this doctor, Davison would joke that Turner was more interested in the costume than in the character's nature. As a cricket fan, Davison thought it might be fun to see the doctor in a casual cricket-style outfit and then throw a long, dark coat over it. Turner listened to Davis's input, but the long, dark coat was gone. In a 2011 Q&A at Gallifrey One, Davison would say, I would have loved to have gone into the changing room to have a pick of things off the shelf, mixed and match. I thought the costume was a bit over-designed for me, but it was very comfortable. The question mark shirts would also continue. Turner thought that the doctor should have a unique ornament, just as Baker had had his scarf. Thus, the stick of celery was born. Davison agreed, as long as you explain it in the show. People are going to wonder. Turner wasn't ready with an explanation yet, but insisted that the doctor needed something weird to remind the audience that he was an alien. This explanation would come in Davison's final story. The doctor is allergic to certain gases, and the celery would turn purple in their presence. Along with a new vulnerability and a less confrontational nature, Davison played up the doctor as if he were a little weary for his age. Adric was already on board. Nyssa, a young scientist, was added, along with an Australian stewardess, Tegan. Also with a three-person crew, Turner brought back the idea of a companion who wanted to go home. The next big change would be the end of the sonic screwdriver. Both Turner and Bidmead thought it was a magic wand and a plot killer. It was destroyed in the visitation. Then, for the first time in over a decade, a companion would die. Morning, Tegan and Nyssa would ask the doctor to use the TARDIS to save him, only to learn that the doctor could not change his personal timeline. In the season final, Tegan would leave, yet she would return next year. In his first three years as showrunner, John Nathan Turner made many wholesale changes to the show, and the word marketability does keep popping up. And I think that was very forward-looking. As we all know, the 1980s brought the boom in the action figure world and the toys based on TV shows. Now, it was a mistake to get rid of the sonic screwdriver and canine, for they would have sold greatly also. But Turner was looking forward and thought only of the good of the show, in my opinion. And this week for a recommendation, let's turn to Acorn for Hamish Macbeth. I've watched the first five episodes, and while the first three may be a little slow, the payoff by the time you get to episodes four and five is well worth it. So enjoy Hamish Macbeth. Enjoy your journey through time and space. Remember, there's not an all clear yet. Stay socially distanced. Wear a mask. Love your friends, love your family, stay safe, and I'll talk to all of you again soon.